Good morning. Welcome to worship here at St. John's this morning. We have a special service today. It's Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. And so we see Jesus make his journey into Jerusalem on his way to the cross for us and for our salvation. And as we follow Jesus in our lives, he encourages us, he urges us to fix our eyes on him. And that'll be our focus of our worship today. Everything that you need for the service you'll find on the screens, also in the worship folder. I would ask you to fill out the Connect card that's in your pew sometime during the service. If you're joining us online, welcome, and you can find your Connect card in the menu as well. You can remain seated for the beginning of the service, and may the Lord bless our time together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, during the weeks of Lent, we have been preparing to commemorate our Lord's suffering, death, and resurrection. Today we come together to begin the solemn journey of Holy Week. Christ entered in triumph into his own city to complete his work as our Savior and to gain for us the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. We follow him in faith and praise him with joy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Please stand. Our gospel reading comes from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered, as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Let us pray. God our Father, we remember how Jesus entered Jerusalem and was welcomed as a king by those who shouted, Hosanna and spread their clothing and palm branches in his path. Accept our praise and listen to our prayers as we rejoice in our triumphant King, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lord Jesus, on this day, when we remember your entry into Jerusalem as King and Savior, we walk with you to your cross, where your righteousness is given to all who believe. Search our hearts and minds that we may receive your word, share in your spirit, and be renewed in our relationships with you and with one another. With humble hearts, let us pray together. Lord Jesus, the Father's only Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, hear us as we pray. You reign over all things and yet humbled yourself for our salvation. We confess that our rebellion against you in thought, word, and action is the reason why you entered into this world. It is why you passed through the gates of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, and why you laid down your life upon Calvary's cross on Good Friday. To forgive our sins, to redeem our lives, and to cancel the debt we owe to God. With hearts that are humble and lives that are grateful, help us to receive your grace and bow before you in worship, confessing. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, shows his mercy to us in the sending of his only Son, who was handed over to death so that we may be reconciled to the Father. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because of our King's mercy, the gates of righteousness are open to us. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, as he was acclaimed by those who scattered their garments and branches of palms in his path. So may we also hail him as our King and follow him with perfect confidence, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading comes from the prophet Zechariah, chapter 9, verses 9 to 12. The prophet gives a prophecy of a king coming. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. He will rule, or his rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. <clears throat> Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. This is the word of the Lord. Come the King. 
Our epistle reading comes from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. This is the word of the Lord. We join together in confessing the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of light, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
As Pastor Walther mentioned, the message today is based on that section of Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1, 2, and 3. We bow our heads to pray. Lord, bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts. May they be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear friends in Jesus, our Savior, we heard our gospel reading for Palm Sunday way up front in the beginning of the service. And a simple summary of that section is Jesus rides into Jerusalem to die on a cross. Did you hear that? That was my watch. That was weird. Oh, I mentioned Palm Sunday. Oh, where was I? Jesus rides into Jerusalem to die on the cross. And he knew what he was getting into, that the shouts of Hosanna on Palm Sunday would give way to cries of crucify him by Good Friday. And so this wasn't Jesus just stumbling into a trap by accident. Jesus knew where this was going. And still he rode on. And with that in mind, here's a simple summary of our reading here from Hebrews. Jesus says, you see where I went? Follow me. And run with perseverance. And that word perseverance, that makes it sound like this isn't going to be all that easy. That there's always going to be the temptation to give up. And that's right. And so when Jesus says, follow me, he also adds, fix your eyes on me. And so our simple theme for Palm Sunday is fix your eyes on Jesus. Jesus rides into Jerusalem because there's a cross with his name on it there. And he goes there to die. And he says, follow me. And you can't follow Jesus without going where he goes. Following just doesn't work any other way. And what that means is that there is this unique struggle that every follower of Jesus faces. In the previous chapter, in Hebrews chapter 11, there's a long list of believers who had experienced that struggle. People like, like Abraham. He's writing to the Hebrews, to Jewish people, and so Abraham would really resonate with, with them. After 25 years of waiting for God to keep his word and to give him a son, and after trusting God's promise that his Savior would come through that son, and after growing to love that son, Isaac, more and more each day of his childhood, God tells Abraham, go climb a mountain and build an altar and give him back. That couldn't have been easy. Abraham trusted the Lord, and he struggled as a result. And it wasn't just Abraham. You can look through the lives of, of every believer in the Old Testament and the New Testament and up to the present day, and you will see this struggle in the life of everyone. In the Old Testament, Noah believed and the whole world laughed at him while he and his sons built an ark where there is no water. Daniel believed, and his king throws him in the lion's den for living his faith. And in the New Testament, there's Christians who are dressed up like sheep, and they're thrown to the lions. And those who survived, they worshipped in caves. All of them followed Jesus, and it was hard it just goes with the territory of following Jesus. It's a struggle. And let's make sure we understand what this struggle is against. It's against sin. And that only makes sense because Jesus calls us away from sin. And yet, sin is all around us, and so there's bound to be this friction in our lives. It's hard to go against the flow. And Jesus calls us to swim straight upstream. For example, society tells us that there really is no absolute right and wrong as far as morality goes. As long as you don't hurt somebody else, 
And then it goes on to define what hurting somebody else really entails. But that's not what Jesus says, and so we can't say that either. Or society says all religious roads, they lead to the same place. They lead to paradise or heaven. But that's not what Jesus says, and so we can't say that either. Sometimes it's by public pressure, but most often it's by silent seduction. There is this constant call from the world to go in the opposite direction of Jesus, and that's where the struggle comes in. Because you can't chase after the world and follow Jesus at the same time. But there's even more to this struggle. The temptation to hear Jesus say, follow me, and then to go run in the opposite direction, that doesn't just come from the outside. The worst of it comes from the inside. It's not just that my heart is being pulled in two different directions. It's that my heart is pulling me in two different directions. It's not just general greediness in the world. It's my greed. My greed that looks for happiness and more apart from finding contentment in Jesus. And it's not just hatred in general. It's my hatred that always tries to find somebody else to blame. You know how that is? That instead of looking to Jesus for the strength to confess your sins and to to forgive others, my arrogance doesn't want to submit to God's will. And my apathy doesn't even really care what God's will is. The sin all around us, that's not even the half of it. It's the sin in here that hears Jesus say, follow me, and considers that to be one of the worst ideas in the world. And all of that is what makes this struggle that that every Christian faces. You know the struggle? I hope so, because if you don't, there's, there's something wrong. God describes it here like a race. And when you think a race, don't think of like a 100-meter dash, boom, it's over. Think more like a marathon, maybe an ultra-marathon. Who's run a marathon here? One more than last night. <laughs> 5K is the best I could do, and that's when I was dating Stacy and I was trying to impress her. <laughs> but this is talking like a marathon or an ultra marathon, and, and you started this race the moment that God brought you to faith in Jesus, and you won't cross the finish line until God takes you home to Jesus. And so right now, you are on this path and this race that God has marked out specifically for you. And it's hard, and you get tired. And not only that, in addition, there's all these voices calling from the sideline, there's an easier way, take a different path. But then also, there's God also calling to you and saying, don't give up. Keep following Jesus. The writer of the Hebrews says, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. God says, don't give up the struggle against sin because that's dropping out of the race before you even get to the finish line and if you do that, you're never going to get across the finish line. Instead of dropping out, to keep on going and to find the strength to persevere, fix your eyes on the finish. And you see you standing there. Jesus with open arms. And that Jesus is standing there at the finish line. That means that he also ran this same race. That he knows what it's like to struggle against sin. He's no stranger to that. The only difference is that he didn't struggle against his own sin. He struggled against yours and mine. For 33 years, he struggled against 
the, the greed and the hatred and the arrogance and the apathy and everything in between. And he always persevered, never giving in, never giving up. And when he calls you to follow him, he never asks you to go somewhere that he hasn't gone already. That's not the way that leaders work. And so on Palm Sunday, Jesus rode into Jerusalem for the final lap of his race to deliver sin its final blow. And I said earlier that there was a cross there with his name on it. Maybe more precisely would be to say that there was a cross there not with Jesus' name on it, but with your name on it. It was your death that he came to die, and it was your punishment that he came to suffer. And you ever wonder what kept him going? I mean, Jesus knew what he was getting into. And when he got into the thick of it, it hurt. And he could have just snapped his fingers and said, I'm tapping out, I'm done. You ever wonder what kept him going? Our passage tells us, it says that it was the joy that was set before him. In other words, it was like this prize set before him. And to boil away all of the, the figurative language from that, what kept Jesus going was you. You're the prize. It was to stand where you have fallen and to keep on going when you have quit and to pay for your sin and to take away the power of your death. It was for you. And Jesus crossed the finish line. And it's finished. And so when you think about certain sins that you've committed and you wonder, you really wonder if things are okay between you and God or, or there's, is there something else that I need to be doing here? Fix your eyes on Jesus. He ran the race for you and he's crossed the finish line. That's what it means that he's the pioneer of faith. He ran the race ahead of you and for you and it is finished. And if you wonder about something else, you wonder if you have what it takes in here. You, you wonder if you have the strength to persevere so that Jesus will hand you the prize at the end. Fix your eyes on Jesus. He's not just waiting for you at the end of the finish line. He's still running his race with you. That's what it means that he is the perfecter of faith. He's called you to heaven, and he's going to finish what he started. When you're weak, he is your strength, and when you sin, he is your forgiveness. And when you fall, he carries you. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. And you'll find him on every page of the Bible. And when you find him there, you'll see something else right behind him you'll see a cloud, a great cloud of witnesses. Like Abraham, like Noah, like Daniel, like Christians who were, were thrown to the lions and worshipped in caves, or maybe more personally, people that you yourself have known, Christians who have died. Christians who ran the race ahead of you and they struggled against sin just like you do and Jesus has already taken them to heaven. And they're a great cloud of witnesses to God's grace and to Jesus' forgiveness and the Holy Spirit's faithfulness. They've finished their race and God has taken them home and God points you to them so that you might know what he did for them, he's also going to do for you. Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition 
from sinners so that you do not grow weary and lose heart. Happy Holy Week and fix your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Because our Lord Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross, now he is highly exalted at the Father's right hand, ready and able to receive our prayers and accept our praise. Let us go to him in prayer for all people in their various circumstances. For people without the necessities of food, clothing, and shelter, that the Holy Spirit would hear their cries and groans, bringing tears of relief and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who face this day burdened with illness or addiction, ongoing conflict with people around them, or fear of what might happen, that God would assure them of his gracious presence and strengthen their faith in his guidance and protection. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who serve the needs of others as they provide medical and emergency care, as they maintain order in our communities and peace across borders, and as they put themselves in danger that their neighbors may find the protection they need, that God would use the gifts that he has placed within them to serve in compassion and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For loving families and caring communities, for schools and institutions of higher learning, wherever people gather to share and build up, that God would provide them the wisdom and understanding they need to do his will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for people near and dear to us, especially Jeff Hendricks as he receives treatments for his cancer, and Amanda Hobowitz, um, who is having recent health difficulties, Kim Geitel's relative who is recovering from a couple of surgeries after being shot, and Sam Zacharias who recently returned home from an extended stay in the hospital, Louise Zilka as she recovers from shoulder replacement surgery, Pauline Yeager who is currently in the hospital, and for the family of Scott Enter, Naomi Hathaway's brother, who you called to join your great cloud of witnesses on Friday afternoon, that God would visit, relieve, and console them in his grace and mercy, and for the church here and around the world, that our Lord would strengthen our faith and move us to be his servants, drawing people to his glorious death and resurrection and serving him with all that we are and have. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Into your hands, Heavenly Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. At this time, the offering will be gathered. Please also remember to place your Connect card in the plate as it passes by you.
Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should give thanks to you, Almighty Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who step by step obediently went to the cross to overcome sin and death and give salvation to all who believe. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Please stand. This true body and blood strengthen you and preserve you until life everlasting. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, Thanks and praise to you, gracious God, for the gift of your Son's body and blood, by which we are assured that this victorious death and resurrection mean grace and every blessing now and into an eternity with you. Strengthen us by this sacrament, that we may serve you constantly in faith and fervent love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We remain standing for our final hymn. may be seated. Good morning. And oh, thank you. Thanks. It's been a long road of trying to get better from getting sick. So it's been good. Um, it is very good to see all of you today. Happy to celebrate Palm Sunday in the beginning of, of Holy Week. A few announcements here for you. Uh, the story is continuing here uh, between services. Uh, we hope that you can join us today. Today at 9.30, we'll be meeting in here for the, for the video and then um, going to our small groups. Um, just the, the note that if you, have, if you did pick up a, a worship folder today, that the, the Holy Week and Easter schedule is right in the, the worship folder. But you can also take some of those uh, those. Um, welcome to, to Holy Week invites. Um, those are on the Welcome Center kiosk as well. So you can feel free to take one of those and in, um, hand it to a family member or friend as an invitation. I don't believe I have any called news yet to, to report. It's still the, the same. Um, but then just a, a little bit of an overflowing update. Um, if you haven't, um, please consider turning in a commitment card um, at, at some point in the near future. Um, just a little bit of an update with that. Of the 80% who committed, there was an increase of 10% in general in giving, which is pretty cool. So if you haven't committed yet, um, you still have time to join us in this pretty awesome journey. Um, and there are still, I think there should still be commitment cards in the back in the basket on the overflowing table. So hopefully you can join us in doing that. It's been a pretty awesome uh, journey going through that. Otherwise, God's blessings, and um, hopefully we'll see you a lot in the next few days with Holy Week. Have a good day. <laughs>